Hello, hello. Welcome to our much neglected YouTube channel on Pattern Review. I'm Deepika, founder and owner of Pattern Review. And today I am here with Ray and Carrie from Fit for Art Patterns to on my left. And um, I am basically um, just going to follow through with a cool idea I had in my head that why don't we uh, feature an indie pattern company? And while we're at it, let's chat um, with the owners, with the designers, because I truly do believe that um, the pattern you're sewing, if you're using an indie pattern company, there's it's more than just a paper uh, pattern or a digital pattern. Um, I feel like indie pattern designers independent designers put a lot more of themselves in their patterns and that's what makes them a little um, special and different and uh, that's what we're here to talk about like what makes fit for out patterns so cool and um, so we started carrying we were induced to fit for our patterns um, I believe in about 2013 has it been it has actually been that yeah and um, we, I was introduced to these patterns and Ray and Carrie by our beloved teacher, Sarah Veblen. Um, and she told me, you've got to try out their pants pattern. They, uh, I think she collaborated with you guys on that pattern. So yeah, and as they say, rest is history. So, but we've never actually sat down and chatted. So, um, which we're gonna do right now. And I hope you all are following along in our Celebrate Indie Pattern Week with Fit for Art Patterns. And uh, welcome, Ray. Welcome, Carrie. Thank Glad you so here. much yeah. for being here. Okay, so um, I told them that I'm gonna keep this chat casual, so I may throw some questions at them. They may or may not know about them. And I might still do that. Um, okay, so most people start with the history, but I'm going to ask about, I'm a more present girl. So I'll ask you, what's the most exciting thing about Fit for Our Patent right now for you guys? Well, of course, we love the two words at the beginning and end of the name, Fit. We're really all about fit. And we sort of started because I was being asked to teach wearable art classes and I couldn't find a pattern I could fit well on a lot of people. And so we developed one and that has led to all of the other products that we have. Uh, and we think it's a great pattern for art, which is why I started working with that shape because I wanted to make artful things. Carrie and I were having fun making artful things and trying to find the right sort of package for it. And so that's how we started. And that's how really what's continued to philosophically drive us. Oh, and because having fun is always creating new, new, very new patterns and styles right. that, that are that sort of artful right. ex expression. Right. Playing so with that's actually very unique um, about your patterns, I think, because I've seen a lot of wearable art patterns um, because they are they tend to be more like background, like backdrop for, um, you know, surface design and other things or they tend to be uh, slightly more rectangular shape, but yours are more they're more fitted. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's pretty unique. And you have plenty of patterns which uh, can make up for the whole wardrobe. My daughter uh, paints a lot and um, I paint with fabric, as I say, I, I work with uh, fiber. So one of my projects in mind for us to collaborate as mother daughter is to <laughs> use one of your patterns so she can paint on it and I can use it um, as a jacket or a top. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, so if, so like with that in mind, if I were to ask you which pattern to pick, what would it be? 
from the catalog of patterns? So it would, um, we, we generally start people with the jacket pattern because it, it really is such a, a versatile base, but it also would depend on whether you wanted to work with knits or wovens. Um, we've done a lot mm -hmm. of painting on fabrics with both mm -hmm. and, um, you've painted uh, on knit fabrics, huh? Oh, there's yes. some great paints for painting on knit pattern. Oh yes. my God. I may have to check with you offline on that because if she can paint on knit fabrics, ooh. Yeah, yeah. We found a great product for that and have had a lot of fun with it. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And uh, so I would so that say is that um, it depends if you and your daughter both want to make something. How old is your daughter, Deepika? She is actually turning 13 tomorrow. Oh, wow. So we do have this new pattern that's a kid's pattern. I'm not sure you even have it in your collection yet, but- um, All right, well, I'm gonna make a note. Make add... And you could make one and you could both be painting on it if you wanted to. Uh, it's called the Tabby Jacket. I think it's uh, here. Can we, can we see it? And Ooh, uh, that basically is... our adult Tabby La Rosa jacket, only in kid's size. And it has a lot of directions for the kid to make it themselves with just an adult advisor. So um, it's a fun project, um, but you can, like you, Carrie said, you can paint, you know, each of our products gives you an opportunity to paint in different ways. If painting is what you wanna do, we have the Carpe Diem now, which is the dress tunic, and that gives you a really beautiful large space to decorate mm -hmm. both um, in the, Jacket, the back is a beautiful large space, but in the Carpe Diem, you get it in both front and back. Same with the knit tops. Uh, and then you have on the pants, the pants legs are a very fun place to paint. We've painted some um, pants legs uh, down at the bottom, coming up the side seams before, and um, also done some applique things like that. So while the pants are our you know, our thinking person's product that really enhances the jacket and the tops, they can also be artful if you want them to be. That's wonderful. And, um, you know, I, I'm wearing my top, which uh, is an applique on a knit, kind of like the Alabama Channon inspired yes. uh, projects, but I do like fitted garments. So this is another pattern, which is a princess seam. Um, mm -hmm. Inspired by Sarah Veblen because she loves Princess Seam. So um, I'm, you know, really intrigued by the paint idea. I think that might be kind of fun to do. Um, and it's really wonderful to be able to combine um, different hobbies into one garment, which you can then wear. So that's really cool. Uh, now, I can see in the background, there are some, ja are, are they all the Tabula Rasa jacket or are they different ones? So uh, this is the Tabula Rasa jacket as a vest. Okay. Directly behind me, the Tabula Rasa jacket quilted as a jacket. And next to it, the Tabby jacket quilted as a jacket. Behind that in the blue is the Carpe Diem tunic. And it has some appliques around the neckline. And then we have a knit, a twin set, which is one of the variations for our knit pattern. And there's that actually a t-shirt underneath that, but there's also a tank top in the twin set you could make if you wanted to. So that's uh, most of our upper body products. <laughs> mm -hmm. our, um, no pants hanging there. They always look so strong. Yeah, I know, they look like <laughs> We leave them aside. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, by the way, too, for all of you guys watching, I am going to be putting links to all of these patterns in the description box uh, somewhere. I think if you click on more and description, you can see it. We will also be posting this uh, video on Pattern Reviews blog. So uh, be sure to check it out and give these patterns some love. And um, uh, speak. I think you talked about variation. So let's talk a little bit about that because we have patterns which are your core patterns and then you um, offer patterns which use the core patterns and adding design details. So which I think is a very, very smart idea, also very sustainable. And once you've put in the effort of fitting 
a core garment, um, why not just have some fun with it? So tell us, tell us a little bit about more, uh, a, a little bit more about that, how that idea came about. So that is that really encapsulates our whole philosophy because we realize that so many home sewers really struggle with fit, and nothing more frustrating than buying a new pattern that's so cute and and putting a lot of time into it and then finding it doesn't fit you well. So we really encourage people to start with the core pattern, get it to fit just right, and then just change a few elements at a time with the, what we call variations um, that are just give you different stylistic choices. Mm -hmm. So for example, the neckline that I have on today called, we call the funnel neck, which is from one of the jacket variations called rain or shine variations. And I love this one in cool weather because I always like to have my neck covered, for example. Um, so it's just a, a an easy way to to add a lot of differences without without starting from scratch every time. Yeah, I like that. Right. Um, it really and was the core of why we started. I mean, we really um, and when we travel uh, and do public appearances or teach to a group or um, go to a show, we have our jackets made in every size. We can put them on the person who's gonna buy the pattern and send them home with their size. And if they need to make any adjustments, we send them a little, we have a little note sheet that we send them home with. And then online, we have all the ex explanation for how to do all those pattern adjustments before they actually start making it themselves. So we have that for, we don't have our um, samples of every product because the if we fit you in the jacket, pretty much that'll be close to the size that you would wear in any of the other uh, products that you see behind us. But we um, we do have uh, the videos and online, um, they're called common fitting adjustments, where we go through and show you how to change the pattern before you ever start making it in fashion fabric. So. We do believe in the mock-up. We believe in the horizontal balance lines and the grain lines as a way to read the, the fabric and see what you need to change so that the garment hangs well and looks great on you. That's great. Those um, words are very common because Sarah Veblen uses them all the time. I can see why you guys are such good friends. Um, <laughs> anybody who's taken Sarah's Zoom classes on pattern review knows she uh, swears by horizontal balance line for fitting as a fitting tool and, um, you know, making a mock-up or a muslin is always better and make as many as you need and get the fit right before jumping into that right. fashion especially, fabric. Especially, Deepika, when you are working with uh, a, an, an applique technique or a painting or quilting or something that is you're spending a lot of time investing in just creating the fabric that's going to make the garment you want to make sure it's right you don't want to be putting all that energy into something that you're not then going to be able to wear or feel comfortable in I think that's another part of our sort of mantra we want you to be comfortable and we know that everybody even has their own sort of definition of fit for themselves they some people want a looser fit I like to have a pretty loose uh, fit I don't like my clothes to be very tight on my body other people prefer a much snugger fit so even just identifying that and and being given permission to choose the kind of fit you want and then creating the patterns that give you that fit I really appreciate that. I really do. Because I mean, like I've always felt like I used to really, when I first started sewing, I used to really like fitted garments, but now I like more ease. Mm -hmm. And I just hate when things dig into me. Mm -hmm. And I feel like clothes once worn, one should just forget about them. Well-fitting clothes should do that for you. Um, you shouldn't, ha you shouldn't feel any clothing. Um, right. They should kind of become a part. And I do agree that I've, um, you know, moved away from quick and easy garments. I like my garments to be more intentional, which means 
it is it takes me longer to make something because I'm just putting so much thought into them and um you know we might as well get the fit right and uh yeah I like I like your mantra um so how many patterns do you have in your catalog uh, how many core patterns do you have I know you have the pants pattern you have the knit tee um jacket and the twin set so the the twin set is a variation of the knit the tee. tee okay so there's the four four wardrobing patterns for adult women mm -hmm. and then we've just added the kid one as a core right. pattern and we don't because we just added that last year we haven't done any variations on it at this point but um and then there are at least three variations for all but the the dress pattern um and which the jacket is, which was our original we have like i don't know seven yeah we have some four like that. that are digital only that have yeah. been fired from print and then we have uh three more that are still in print as well as yeah. digital. I, I love digital patterns i think it it's um it's very good for the environment not having to print all that paper and use on demand um how has that experience been for you guys well, we've made the um we've managed to make the switch. There was a little learning curve. Of course. <laughs> and finding somebody who could help us make that change. A digitizer. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. been fabulous for us. But uh now that we have a partner, it, it works great. And I think the patterns are are better because of it. Uh, yeah. a little more precise, a little more able to to refine things mm -hmm. so that's wonderful great okay so which was mm, i want to ask you to pick between your children that's what patterns are for most designers i've heard you're um, so right <laughs> I, see <laughs> um what is which one is your favorite pattern that question goes to ray and carrie both it could be the same or it could be like, or maybe tell me right now, which is your favorite pattern. And you can't pick the tabby jacket because you just made. <laughs> and we don't wear it. So, you yeah, know. you don't wear it. I know. <laughs> really more influenced by what we like to wear. Yes. Uh, I, I like to wear vests. So that's using the jacket pattern to make a vest is one of my favorite things. And I've even done it with, um, the knit pattern, the like the twin set pattern, which has a sleeveless thing, so you can use it to make another kind of vest, which is fun. Mm -hmm. You yeah, so you like the tabular rasa jacket <laughs> uh, made into a vest. Yeah, right. so basically you leave the sleeves off, leave the leaf sleeve and you make off. a few modifications uh, in the side panel to give it a better fit, and um, and that of course is another free resource on our website. Right. That's great. Have, I'm going to include a link um, to your website in the description on the blog. And of course, we carry all of your patterns on uh, pattern review as well. And Ray, what is your favorite pattern? So I love them all. I think they are all my children. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> a, but um, I'm wearing the, a knit. This is the knit um, swing side top with the clever crossing variation, which has all these little crisscrosses. And I thought that was a really, really clever pattern um, variation because um, it's a V-neck, which is universally flattering, but it's not super low. Right. Mm -hmm. And it gives you coverage and it's very, I thought that was really wonderful. Right. right. So this is, I would say that day in and day out, I often pick a knit to wear. Um, but I do, you know, I'm very fond of the jacket. We, that was our first, our first baby. And I'm always playing with it and making new and different things and um, trying it out with different people. The Carpe Diem is a fun new project for me. Um, I have found, I think, in my brain that having all that big expanse, I, I need something to break me in the middle. So I've started putting seams down the middle of it sometimes or a pin tucks or something to try to give myself a little break in that wide expanse of my upper body. But um, 
So now carpe diem is your is that the dress it's pattern? The dress tunic. That's the dress tunic. Dress, yeah. yeah. So it's a it's really a pullover uh, top or dress for wovens as opposed right. to knits. Yeah. So it's a lot like the knit, only it's for wovens. And that you know that's been a whole nother fun place to be doing decorations and interesting uh, appliques and things that are that are fun. So I you know I do like and I have to say one of the most freeing things in my life has been to have a pattern for pants that fit me reliably, and I can make them. We as can, many times uh, as you want. And I need them if I need a new color or if I've worn a pair out or, and I, I, to me, that's one of the great celebrations is if you have garments you've made that you've worn out, it means you really loved them and wore them. <laughs> and having that same pattern still around, you can make them again, maybe tweak them, you know, sometimes if, depending on the fashion, I make my pants with tighter legs and sometimes looser legs. We now have a variation for a wide leg pair of pants, which is really, you know, fashionable right now. And, um, and I've had, I have fun wearing them. I have to say, I would not have thought that would have been the best look for my figure, but I have found them to be comfortable and fun with a little short top, you know, always finding a new way to expand the wardrobe. <laughs> I know what that's that's so fun. Looks like you guys have a lot of fun in your studio playing with the mm -hmm. with uh, you know adding art to the patterns. But let me ask you this: um, I sometimes get so bogged down by all the stuff I do I want to do that sometimes I have decision fatigue. So when you talk about, I see that you've done quilting, you've done painting. So do you ever feel that? Oh my god. Like, I'm so excited. I could do this. I could do that. So do you ever get into that indecisive mode? Like what, because the possibilities are endless? I would say we kind of go through phases, right, of being interested in one medium or another and, mm -hmm. and playing with that for a while. And then I also think we it's really nice that we work together because if one of us is spinning, the other one yeah. can say, this is what you should do. Yes. Or you get in a project where you just can't make a right, decision. <laughs> right. We have the other one to keep us straight and, and move us forward a little bit, which I think is also, you know, it's always good to have a sewing friend. It, who, it really uh, is. So speaking of friendship, that. let's let's talk a little bit about that. I'm, I'm curious. Now, did you guys know each other before you started the company or you became friends because of the company or you've always known this? You've always been friends. We've known each other since uh, our children, before our children were born. Right. And they're what? all in their 30s. Yeah. <laughs> we, so. we met through our husbands who started to work at the same law firm on the same day in 1985. So How wonderful is that? Met, and now, yeah, did you say it wasn't back then? Her husband yet, her boyfriend. Sure. <laughs> And so our first sewing project together was to make her wedding dress. Yes, no right. kidding. And that then, was your first sewing project. All yeah. of you guys watching, what is happening here? <laughs> and then the other great thing is that two years ago, Ray made my daughters. Well, we together we worked on it, but she did all the really beautiful We work. took Carrie's dress and turned it into a pants outfit for her daughter to wear. Oh Which my so gosh, I really love fun. that so much. I'm going to have to find links and pictures. Um, I'm sure you have posted that on your website, on any of the social media, are they on there? Yeah, so there's a actually a blog post about- Okay, I'm gonna find that. Aren't there? Yeah. We have a blog that we've been writing every week for Many six years. or seven years. <laughs> And so it is full of projects and how we did them. And some things have two or three, depending on how complicated the project was or um, all kinds of different fabrics, how to work with them, different fitting questions, different kinds of seams, how to put in different kinds of zippers. 
um, you know, we've just been writing and writing and writing about sewing for a really long time and how much fun we have doing it and all the fun, incredibly fun things we've made. We, we have had a good, um, we continue to have a I good I love that. I love that friendship story. And I love the, the wedding dress um, passed down from one generation to another. That must have been a rewarding um, experience for both of you and uh, for your daughter as well, I hope. Yes. Um, what is, um, okay, so this comes up quite a bit on the website on Pattern Review um, because mostly we are garment sewers and I mean, I guess that can happen in any type of sewing. Do you ever have, um, go through phases in which you're lacking sewing mojo and you're not able to sew because of one thing or the other? And if you go through those phases, how do you get back that inspiration? And I haven't sewn much. I mean, I'm I'm excited now. I've already almost finished um, a, a sewing project and a knitting project. I'm excited this year, but I've struggled in the past. So what advice, if any, you have for others? How to lift your sewing mojo or how to bring that sewing mojo back? So I would say when I'm really stuck, the first thing I do is organize my stash because there's a lot of beautiful things in my stash and they will inspire me to make something. They, you know, and so I'll go through them and something down at the bottom of the pile, I'll go, oh, you know, that would really fit in with the way I live right now. I'm gonna make that into something. And it doesn't have to be something new. I mean, the beauty of working with Fit for Art patterns is you can return to the base. You can make something really simple or you can make something really complicated. And I do that. I do all of those things. Not everything I make is covered with art. You know, you just, you need those things to wear every day. Um, so I think that that stash thing is good too. And the other thing I think is to just think about what is it you need? Where so when you're getting dressed to go somewhere, where where are the places where you don't feel like your closet satisfies? What are those, what are those garment needs you have? And then finding a combination of fabric and a pattern that that you know fits or that you think you know you can make and learn to fit, and then you can make those things that you need. And I think our, you know, society has gone through such a big change in the last, really, even since even before the pandemic, we've gotten so casual. Yes. You have, I have a closet full of really beautiful dressy things. I used to wear out to dinner or to church that I don't ever hardly wear anymore. And how do you- No, age? but I hate that. I, I want, I want to feel like I want to dress up. Right. You know, um, but and everybody is just very casual right now. Right. Even now, four years since. Right. Yes. But sometimes I think you can even take those things that you that were dressy and, you know, put a different pair of pants with them, make a different thing to go with them. And all of a sudden you can make it look less fancy or, you know, to go out to dinner or whatever. So I think that that's another way to get your mojo back. What do I need? What what would I like to have more of in my in my closet? And then just start there. Yeah, and that's good advice. What about you, Carrie? Um, I would say, well, this won't apply for everyone, but a lot of times it would be, um, what is it we really need to write about or have a yes, sample of that we, <laughs> that we don't have um, right. or things that people have asked us questions about that we don't have a source to refer them to in our right. in our gallery or in our materials. So that right. would often be, a, for me, a place to start would mm -hmm. be, okay, what has people been asking for that 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 I should try try out? Yeah, so I think that's, that's great because- Inspired by a button or two, a button or two. Oh, that's right. Inspiration can come from anywhere. Yeah. Button or two and a, a, a scrap of fabric you, that you love. Yeah. that you don't have enough Not of enough. Do one thing yeah. for right. that is always a great inspiration mm -hmm. that's wonderful and, 
and then it can be used like I'm, I can't um, I love the binding on your vest and it's just so striking it works with the colors and yet it gives a very it's framing that vest so nicely so even if you have a small piece of fabric there's always creative ways of using it and before you know it I I, I believe that all you have to do is just start and once you start something it you will find a way to finish it. Right. But oftentimes it's like the first step, which is kind of hard. So uh, I'm mindful of the time. So I'm going to ask you a couple last questions. One, what is on your sewing table right now? So right now I'm actually working on a really exciting, fun project. Um, if you can share with us. Oh, well, I, it's, yeah. Uh, a quilt that my mother had um, that she, that a friend had made for her. Um, and it's a very modern contemporary sort of looking quilt. And I'm going to make a long jacket with it. So, wow. so like a duster length, knee yes, length. Exactly. Nice. Length. Nice. That jacket. would be wonderful. And so you're, really you're, cool project. It, so that's, that, <laughs> that is, I just like, have had gotten it all laid out and sat there for a day not getting up the nerve to cut it out and I finally cut it out this morning so yes. now I gotta go awesome once you've cut out it's awesome it's yeah, great it's like that, you've taken that, the that, oh, yeah. you're committed really, is it okay am I gonna destroy it <laughs> you're you're committed now I think it's like, and quilted jackets are all the rage right now and they were last year as well but they're still in and we are in the right season too yes it's so, gonna yeah. be really handsome yeah very pretty so okay so um, I'm, I'm making some pants I have um I started a few years ago adding olive colored things to my wardrobe they go great with the navy I already had the black I already had so uh, during the pandemic somehow every time I was on a website with fabric you know and I would see an olive piece so I found this piece of olive denim with black on the reverse side so that's down there for pants jeans probably because it's a stretch denim mm -hmm. I have another piece that's a sateen that's a little different you know, olive comes in lots of shades I'm telling you I have lots of different shades of olive and so I have another pair of pants to make from from that sateen and those are the kinds of things that'll just take my wardrobe you know, take me back to some pieces I wore that that need a new freshening up. And so I'll be able to do that. So. Yeah, so that, you know, that those pair of the olive pants will be a nice plug into your wardrobe and freshen it's up. It's a, a great little bit. neutral like if you're looking it for it. It is a great neutral. It gives you a little yeah. bit of color and great neutral. Yeah. And it goes surprisingly well with a lot of color. Olive actually also goes with chartreuse, which I've yeah. knitted a few sweaters in that color. So fun. It's not neon, but it's super bright for this time of the year. Mm -hmm. And it goes great with olive because it tones yeah. it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's it's a great color. So, okay. So for all those, for anybody who is new to Fit for Our Patterns, um, what is the one pattern which can be the hook for them? And what would you say to someone who's never tried your patterns? Did that question come out right? Yes. No, that's no, right. no, it didn't. I would say the jacket if you want a woven and the knit yeah. top if you if you like to sew with knits or if you're trying to learn to sew with knits. And I would also say that all our patterns have not just information, uh, they have information about fit, fabrication, design, styling. And so if you um and if you're they just teach you. They teach you how to do it. And so none of them are going to leave you in the lurch. <laughs> They're all going to nurture you if you read and and work through the pattern in a systematic way. Yeah, we have a, a longer booklet than most people with all right. of our patterns that right. is full of this kind of information, not just construction. There's a lot of great educational stuff there. Mm -hmm. um, this is this wonderful. Is fun about our pattern all of our the four top patterns is that they all have the same construction process so once you've done it and learned it in one okay. it's really easy to translate to the others right so and it's a very modern 
comfortable square Relaxing. armhole, easy to put in and um, with a side panel. So it's really a simple construction. It gives you lots of options for color blocking, fabric combinations, or it can all be made in one fabric and look terrific, so. That is great. Well, thank you so much both for coming and, and chatting with me. Um, you know, Fit for Art patterns are just so unique. As I said earlier, you have put a lot of your own design and sewing philosophy into uh, patterns which are available to everybody. And, um, um, you know, I, I'm excited to hear about the new tabby jacket. We will have it on pattern review as we do other patterns. And those of you who are watching um, buy these patterns on pattern review or on Fit for Art website, all of the links will be down below. And if you have made a Fit for Art pattern, share with us, write a review on pattern review. And uh, you know, even if you made a pattern more than once, it's good to see uh, it made up, especially fit for our patterns, because they can look so different depending on what technique you've used, even if you've used a different, you know, fabric and color blocking. So uh, share with us, write a review, and thank you for watching. And hopefully um, you will hear from other indie designers soon on the website as well. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you, Deepika. Bye-bye. Thanks.